Well, it's a new day and a new episode. Um, I'm not sure what to preface this episode with. Um, we're probably going to catch up and then get past where I left off before I lost my footage, so that'll be fun. <laughs> okay, we're back to where we were before. Oh boy. Spork monster time. Let's see if I can remember the voice I gave the spork monster. I, uh, think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be very afraid! Of me! Because I'm a monster! See? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Before you can dis discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? Um... First time I did this, I tried to defend first, but I think I'll try to attack first. Decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real! That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You took one damage. Um, I'll attack again. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? I'll cook with love again. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. Spork Monster focused on mash mine and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? I don't think that happened last time I fought Spork Monster. Um, I'll defend this time. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You hold your head between your hands and mutter, This is not happening. This is not happening. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork Monster uses Utilitin- Oh wait. Utilitinsile? You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. I'll defend again. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Buff up. You, no one can control this much buffness. You start to feel bloated and, quite frankly, a little gassy. You'd better attack soon or you're likely to explode. You decide to go on the attack. Uh, Chow Down? Chow Down does two damage. A powerful blow. Spork Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. Ew. I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Oh. My cat wants out. Okay, we're back. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded Edge. Oh, here comes Colonel Sanders to my rescue. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot pie power pinch! Pot pie power pinch does 10 damage! Spork monster is defeated. You saved me! He's steaming. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy, finish him, or spare this wretched beast. If Undertale has taught me anything, it's that you should always have mercy and spare people or you fight a really difficult boss <laughs> just kidding i'm not that mean i'll spare him you manage to tap down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity not your wrath be gone beast and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow i won't forget this and i certainly won't be back like you said the spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borko. Hmm. Borko. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. 
As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy! You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. <laughs> ah, in your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> I forgot about this, how they all just kind of zoop by. Zzz. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was the secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this sound might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clank. Like him? Like, like, like? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got the talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. Aha, <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked at them, a very strange feeling came over me. And the feeling was blunt. Ooh, I can't speak in her voice right now, gosh. <laughs> and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever, anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not dis I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, 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 that would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Um, we're almost caught up to where I was last time before I lost my footage, so I'm gonna go with what I went with last time, which is make up a fake ingredient because I don't want to be betraying my man. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about it was Eye of Newt? I know, it sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow! 
to eyes light up imagining such a thing and you figure that and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and goes does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she is definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossoms fill the air. Of course. It's Colonel Sanders! He's arriving at school! On a horse. <laughs> oh, I should stand back because last time I ran to him and, well, for continuity's sake, I'm gonna run to him again. Just like I did last time and you'll see what happens. You decided that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up on the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, I forgot. His little, his saddle has little chickens on it. That's so cute. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Okay, I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It's important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. I've been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before you can continue, you suddenly awake. Aw, oh, jeez. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Oh, right. Leaning for a kiss compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. It is way too soon to be leaning in for a kiss. That's like end game of the game stuff. So instead, I'm going to compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Maybe you shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who is in the wrong here. But one thing is for sure, Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. Yes, hearts! I forgot that gives me hearts. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ooh, Ashley and Man Man, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like, counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad? I hope that's not foreshadowing. We don't need a demon in this game, too. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tells him to stop acting immature, act like you're not interested in them, but really try to get a closer look. Oh, I forget which one of these I did. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I told them to stop acting immature and then like got into a fight with them. I want to see what happens if I say I'm not interested and then try to get a closer look. You sit near the rivals but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book. Just like the one you found after your encounter with the spork monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. Hee <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. 
Spike must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! <gasps> no! He made Clank cry! <gasps> no! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzz, womp. Oh, now he's angry. <sighs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such a language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Or Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse. Right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got a lo I've got lofty ass- I can't read. I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Go on, student. Please take your seat. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent a morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. You try to give Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Sorry, sorry, I get a little worked up if people try and pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let that be a lesson to you. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sifts the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Hmm. Sprinkle jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy, down! Off! Hoppin, I don't know what that word is. I'm assuming it's in another language? Or maybe just a word I don't know? That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. If you want to pay attention to the lesson, you truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. And you miss most of the important part. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding the tray of food in front of you. Well, okay. Naturally, this appears to you appears to you to be a sim sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? A glass of water, a shimmering pepper, a dog biscuit. Last time I ate the shimmering pepper and I got in trouble because it was like the last of its kind. I feel like the dog biscuit. I feel like the dog biscuit is for, um, I feel like the dog biscuit is for sprinkles. So, I think I'll go with the glass of water. Can't go wrong with good old water. You grab the glass of water and gulp it down. It's cool and crisp, like the purest snow melted by a mountain spring. Hey, that was mine! It was from my favorite to <laughs> toilet! You owe me six dollars! And you've got excellent taste! You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. Okay, this is where I got to last time. So we're now finally caught up. Let's see what happened. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared. Via timed competitive cook-off! The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Demand they stop wasting everyone's time. Step, step up and tell them you're on. I'm gonna say you're on. I wanna battle these guys. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool! Fool! Good one, Van Van. Oh, the hearts. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Kay. I'll be watching your performance. Oh god, that makes it really stressful. I have to impress the colonel with my performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to the madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sporting court. Finally, a little sense. 
You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Just then a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words timer ready. That is very huge. This is what I'm talking about. Aru! I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now it's my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really pre impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? Oh, no. Uh, this one. That's wrong! Oh, no! What were you thinking, Kay? Get your head in the game! You're going to need the se to season the chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say he used? Oh god, uh, I believe it's seven. That's wrong? I've seen schnauzers with better scent than that. And the minutes are kind, no less. Now that you've got some basic sets going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the best flavor? Oh god. Trust? That's wrong. Oh no. I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog good jokes. Is three in a row enough to cause the game over? Yep. <gasps> no. <laughs> uh, I actually managed to avoid game overs until now. That's pretty impressive considering the first time I played this game, I got a game over within like the first scene of meeting all the characters. <sighs> okay. Let's try again. I don't know how far back this will set me. Hopefully just to the beginning of lunch. This is hard. I'm not very smart, and I, I this game's asking me to remember things from previous episodes, I think. Which is making it more difficult. Also, this loading screen is taking a very long time. We got this. Let's go. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Um, it's not 100 seconds. 100 C? That's right. But how would you know- How would you have even gotten into the school without knowing that? When you're going to rub my furry belly, let that be enticing offer. Let that enticing offer motivate you. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Okay, it was either seven or eleven. It was an odd number, I'm pretty sure. That's right. You might not know all of his ingredients yet, but at least you're handed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic stuffs going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind? Uh, it's gratitude or vigilance. I gotta pick one. Vigilance. That's wrong. I'm begging you to get it together. Next question. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on this advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where does it come from? Uh, a small town where dreams are- That's right, this is your shot and you're not going to miss it. Aru! You try to shut down the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. That's wrong! Oh no. Notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Kay! Thank you, somebody has to, because I do not believe in myself right now. He's actually cheering you on! Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders! How many spoons of the grave would it take to fill- Uh, oh god. They were all Colonel Sanders' face? I didn't even see. What were you thinking? Get your mind back in the competition. Grrr! You are stranded on a desert island with only one desert dessert cookbook. What should you take? What a hunk! I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on a challenge? You're falling behind! Got the question. Oh god. What does that have to do with crafting a spectacular fried chicken delicate baked biscuits? Woof woof! You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ah, uh, yikes! Zip, 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 zip. 
I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow of highest utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Wurr. You might not have any and you might not have any hands, but Kay does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking and realize how serious your you when you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixture to rescue your dough before it's over mixed. Oh, this is terrible. Kay, no! But, oh, you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck? It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning heaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Yikes. Oops. Colonel Shander shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart. Look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Kay's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his donkey chops as he looks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. I hope there wasn't actually a way to win that. Otherwise, I'm going to feel stupid for losing. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to dessert. Under, under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide away array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Kay to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring the creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese bouquet atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce. Mm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, <clears throat> that's good. Because he seems to really like simple types of dishes. But Ashley's like way too complex for him. <gasps> oh, you! <laughs> As he places a sauce covered finger to his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize the rage you feel, put yourself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. Ooh. I'm over time, but I don't care. This is too interesting. Um, I'm gonna put myself between them. That's my man. You reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. This goatee isn't- oops. <laughs> I always make the bad choices when I don't know what's coming. This goatee isn't just a fashion statement, it's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. Game over. <gasps> no! <laughs> Two game overs. <laughs> I'm gonna cut here. And we'll try this again. Maybe I'll get another chance to fight Ashley in the next episode. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching.